but Joseph found warmth in the love of his parents unconditionally. That is Jacob and Rachel. But he found that there was a lot of uh, animosity and hate from his half brothers and his half mum. Step mum is what they would call it here. Is that right? We call it uh, step mum. And Joseph find it hard to live a life in that environment. True or false? I said false. Because he found peace because of the warm community through the love of his parents that he continued on to be arrogant. Is that right? No. He wasn't an arrogant boy. The love and warmth of his parents helped him through the hardest part of his journey. While he was in that pit, he cried out for the sake of his life, for the sake of his mom and dad. While he was on that donkey, making his way in a dusty road between Canaan and Egypt, the love of his mom and dad endure him through that trials. While he was inside the home of Potiphar, and when Potiphar's wife tried to make him sleep with him, and that's where the infidelity comes in in our lesson. It's funny how I wrote the sermon. I didn't look at the lesson at all. Seriously. And Joseph's love because of the discipline that his mom and dad has given him in, and make him feel warm at home, that he trusted that discipline. And he was loyal to the max. When he was in the midst of, of an accusation that he raped the, 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 the wife of his lead, of, of his master, he actually didn't actually retaliate back. He just went with it. Yes, you may say in our modern language, in our modern way, and in our Western world, ah, oh, yeah, well, you know, he was a slave. Yes, you can say that. But I tell you what, there are some slaves today. Maybe, let me just correct, uh, correct that. There are some people today that are actually trying to correct the mistakes of the past. You see, Joseph went along with it because of the unconditional love from his parents. And in chapter 39, verse 2, is the key word that I want you to take with you throughout this week and throughout this journey until we meet next time. And I'll give you another key text. Genesis chapter 39, verse 2a. So when you go to university, you've got to actually specifically say, I'm reading the A part of the verse. And then you've got to put it on the side, oh, you know, all these essay writing. You've got to make sure that the, that the lecture gets it right. And if you're going to read at the end or, or part P of the verse, you've got to put the, dot, the three dots in front of it and then you write it down on your essay. It's just this, this whole particular, it's in my, my iPad, but I'm not going to. Then in chapter 39, verse 2, can somebody please read it? Or do you want me to read it for you? Just part, part A of the verse. And God was with Joseph. I know it's difficult to feel warm relationship. Building warm, authentic, realistic, and intergenerational community, not only in our church, but within our families and within the communities, it needs a lot of courage, time, and prayers. It does. I wrote that down, actually. It came from the Spirit, so that's why I wrote it down. Remember, as God was with Joseph, so he will be with you and me, as we do our best to make warm the new cool, to build warm relationships with people, come and embrace your God. In the lesson you'll find that Paul says, be obedience to the leaders who actually walk with God, act like God, and show their ways that it actually glorifies God. You're not going to follow a leader that actually tells you what to do and do something else. You follow a leader that actually resembles what he says. Not like a preacher that once says, you do what I say, but don't do what I do. It is. And let me conclude with this. I'm coming to an end. Jesus was the best at making relationship warm, building relationship in a warm way. Warm way means you don't have to bring a heater and put it around the few people that you're with. Warm means embracing them. Not just only a brotherly love, but a sisterly love. Because sometimes man's brotherly love is a bit tough sometimes. But a, a woman love is always sweet. I mean, I've seen all great 
players, all, all great men and women who have aggregated themselves in sports and everything. And the first word that comes out of their mouth when they win something, they say, thanks, mom. It's always the first word. I love you, mom. Well, what about dad? I sit there and I watch a footy show and this guy is interviewing and he says, I love you, mom. What about dad? Your genetic must have come from dad. It is. So we have to, to integrate the two together. And with that warm love comes the unconditional love that we need to have that fuels our heart. Let me give you some points before I finish. Jesus was the real deal on this. And, you know, Jesus had these aspects that he shows to us how we fuel a warm community, accepting. You find that in Matthew chapter 19, verse 14. Matthew 19, you'll find that the young people came to him. The kids came. You know, I've traveled a lot in some of our country church. And, and a lot of the things that they say to us, to me, that, oh, you know, the kids have grown up. They've gone to university, so they're really outside. They, they're not really. But we can fuel a community, warm community, with the kids that we have right now. And when Jesus was preaching, the disciples wanted to shoo away the kids that were trying to get to him. I don't know why the kids want to get to him. I mean, when there's, there's somebody there, people, the kids like to. I, I like to, when there's a cool guy there, I like to get close to him and look at him and checking him out. But Jesus said, hey, verse 14, Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not stop them. For the kingdom of God belongs to those who are like these children. That's from NLT, uh, New Living Translations. Uh, I like the message, but I like to read the message personally. But I don't want to really quote the message sometimes on, a, on, on, on my sermons, and I apologize for that. So Jesus was accepting. Fueling the warm relationship, he was accepting. It was against, against the culture of his time. Are you with me? Sometimes we are accepting in our culture, but it against some of the, of the structures of our life. And I always say to my son and my family and my kids, I always say to them, your worldview of things makes you who you are today. It's sometimes that we need to step outside that comfort zone of our worldview to make men's for Jesus' love. Because you know what? Jesus' worldview, he stepped away from it. Well, let me just, yeah. Well, that's also intellectual view on the galaxy. He stepped away from it in order to save human being. He came to accept the fallen Adam's children. He knew the cost that he would pay on the cross that bears my name. His perfect sacrifice was offered on that day. The word perfect sacrifice in the scriptures, there were many sacrifices by the children of Israel. There were many sacrifices that was ordered by God, Jehovah, to be done. But there's only one perfect sacrifice, and that was the death of our Lord and Savior. The Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, stating by John the Baptist. When his disciples said to him, who is he? There. The Lamb of God that will take away the sin of the world. Mary's tears filled her eyes as she knelt there and cried, knowing this will be the end of her son's life. From a human perspective, yes, their hopes were gone. But to God, the greatest victory has won. And that's why I, I quote myself on today. I stand today because of his amazing grace. You are here today because of God's amazing grace. There are many things that happen in the world, let alone within our community. Did I overhear there's over 500 things happening in our community? Cases? Sorry. I didn't want to say the word of it. I didn't want to scare anybody. I should have wore a mask. Then. But I take it back to Lake Macquarie. That's all right. No worries. It's happening everywhere. It's bound to be. But Matthew chapter 28, 26, sorry, Mark 14 and Luke chapter 7 and John 12, you find a story of how Jesus is caring. 
Jesus feel warm relationship by accepting, by caring, by welcoming, by authentic. You know, people need authentic people today. They don't need the fake pretenders of Christianity. I won't say what I was about to say, but it popped in my head and I'm pushing it back out again. Jesus was fueling warm relationship hospitably. He accepted it. When these two disciples who asked John, hey, who's that? John said, that's the Lamb of God, slain before the foundation of the earth. He will take away the sin of the world. Oh, can we follow him? Hey, go ahead. And they followed Jesus. And guess who they were? Andrew. You all know who Andrew is? There's not many, not many texts in the scripture that mention the apostle Andrew. But Andrew was known as the disciples of encouragement. And Andrew, if it wasn't for an Andrew, there wouldn't be a Simon Peter. Because it was Andrew who went and said to his brother, Simon Peter, Peter, I think we found the Messiah. Come. And he introduced Peter to Jesus. And Jesus said, O Simon Bakjonah, son of Bakjonah, you will be Cephas, the people. Let me just correct that because many times, yes, the translation says a rock, but in Greek, that little, that rock is a little pebble. It's like an M&M. &M. Oh, sorry, you guys don't eat chocolate. Now I'm thinking about my... That's what I'm saying. I was trying to push it away, you know. It just put away the chocolate thinking. Of it. But it came. Jesus had people like Andrew. Jesus had people like Philip. The two disciples that belonged to John the Baptist that came and followed Jesus. 